another freezing cold day in Michigan. Even though there's no snow, it is frigid. Here's he coming with the tractor. To be our plan of attack today. The grapple of the day. here it is i was on marketplace the other day i know that's hard to believe but i saw something that i just had to have i found a saw that's often brought up as being one of the best chainsaws ever made for firewood and i couldn't believe the condition it was in when i got there it was in canada so i got even a better deal because of the exchange rate i got this sweet hat with it which is the original hat that came with this saw it's never been worn I picked up an original steel 044. This is the early version, 10 millimeter wrist pin. It's got all the gold hardware, which the older saws had. Turn her around. So he can... has not used this saw much. He said he bought it brand new and he used it to cut up a few trees. He'd use smaller saws for doing all the limbing and he would just use this saw for the trunks. He had it on Marketplace. He moved into the city. He didn't need a saw anymore. It had just been sitting in his garage. And he put it on there. All three of his saws he had in a lot. And I said, you know what? What do you want for just the 044? I had no, no idea what condition it was in. I got there. He has the original hat, the little pouch that comes with it with the tools, with the little greaser for the bar. I think two or three bars, five, six, seven chains. And I picked this thing up for 300 US dollars. I've never put it in wood before. This isn't the bar and chain that came with it. It came with a brand new steel oil omatic bar with a 24 inch chain. This is actually the carbide chain that I ran in an earlier video. I took this bar and chain off my 036 Pro because the wood I'm gonna be cutting today has been sitting here for a little while and it's pretty dirty. So I wanna see how this carbide chain runs on this brand new 044. We're using the ram splitter three-point grapple on the coyote to get these logs up at a comfortable height. We're going to get them bucked up because we need more wood for when we compare our splitter. So we'll try to get this log pile done before dark. It's a later day than we expected, like always. Okay. So I'm going to get the 044 warmed up and we'll get to cutting. All right, let's see how she runs. the log using a antiquated system of chalk and a pole. Apparently, I've never seen him do this before. I don't handle the chainsaws or the chainsaws, but he thinks he's going to change that now that I'm part of this channel, which uh, his quest for new items on Facebook Marketplace has grown exponentially since having a YouTube channel. So thank you everyone for the hit my bank account takes continually. <laughs> I don't think I'm ever gonna get a kitchen even though he promises the end of 2023. It's a lot. <sighs> Wishful thinking, he'll just say that took longer than I expected, which if you pay attention to his videos, he says that a lot. <laughs> oh, and the ability to buy things in Canada now to uh, save money. Mm. Let me tell you, it's not saving anybody anything. 
Y'all see me? All right, here we go. The first cuts with the brand new, to me, 044. First impression, what do you think? I'd say that was pretty good. It's got the carbide chain on it, which does not cut as fast as a regular sharp chain, but I've never sharpened this thing and I've cut through little bits of metal that were in a cedar that I took down. I've hit dirt several times and I've never had to sharpen it. So it doesn't cut as fast as a normal chain, but you don't have to sharpen it. So overall, I'd say that did pretty good through some pretty big maple. I'd say that's probably 16 inch diameter. So let's get this one down, get another one marked up and cut some more. See how this thing holds up. Get them stacked. I bucked up a few more logs with the 044 and that thing runs pretty strong. We're going to get this log marked up and Rachel's going to take her turn running the 044. The first time she's ever run a chainsaw. All right, 
Here we go, Rachel's debut on the saw. On this grapple, it's pretty easy, and this 044 is light for how powerful it is, so she's gonna give it a go. All right, just give Rachel a couple of tips here. She's watched me run the saw plenty, but she's never run it herself. All right, so what do I need to know? How do I make it run? I'll start it for you. Well, because drop starting. Careful, I don't want that to fall on your feet. Is a safety violation, but that's how 99% of us start our saws. The correct by the book way would be to step on this or to hold it between your legs like this. But uh, so I'll get it started for you. One thing you want to watch for, one, keep a good grip on it here and here. Because if you hit the tip, it's going to kick back. Don't tell me that, that's scary. Well, with this, you don't have to really worry about it. Just start in your cut here, and then these are the dogs. If you get the dogs in, you can just tilt it. You know, once it, it, the saw will pull itself in a little bit. And then once it gets in, put the dogs in, and then just tilt it, and then just pull back as oh, it you, cuts I, through. You want me to go to the dogs? Yeah, you can once you cut down in. Then you can put the dogs in and just use it to rock it on. And then once you get through a ways like that, just pull back like this and hold it. And when you cut all the way through, don't let it fall onto your leg, okay? Do I just, how do I stop it from running? So if it goes to fall, do I just let go of just the Just let go of the trigger, yep. And then it should like slow at least, or what? Yeah, and how this is designed, this is your chain break. So if you're holding this and it kicks back, that locks the chain. So a lot of times when it kicks back, it'll lock that chain. You're telling me that might kick back and hit me in my well, face? Well, yeah, because you need to be aware. If you if you cut correctly and you're ready and you're strong, you're not weak, you'll be just fine. But just don't don't touch the tip. It's a lot when people try to bore in and they'll, they'll catch the tip oh. or they're cutting in a log pile and they go through and hit the one behind it not paying attention. Okay, okay? so where should I have the saw start? Just like right here. And then pull the trigger put it in, it'll sort of pull a little bit. You can just hold it like this if you want and just cut through. I guess we'll try her. There you go.
chain. Run on that saw, you've earned this vintage 1980s steel hat. You're a lumberjack. Oh, oh, this is perfect. Yeah, I'd be like, Heath. That's how he shows you his hat. You look a lot better in it. You look really cute. <laughs> I don't think I probably do. All right, it's too dark for that, probably. Don't crush it. That's oh, a collectible. Oh, oh, come on. Well, I didn't want to sit on the ground. You should wear it. Now, nah, watch yourself. Uh, all right, guys. That's all right. Hat. We ran out of light. Hopefully, this mm -hmm. footage is all right. Out of time again. It's the story of my life. I think I have way more time than I do, and I don't think stuff takes as long as it does. But I got to run the new 044 today. That thing runs pretty good. It has, it's probably been sitting in that guy's garage for 10 or 15 years not run, and it's the original fuel lines, original everything on that saw. I put the other bar and chain on it, the carbide chain. I'll put a link to the guy I got that chain from. He built them himself, and it's in one of my earlier videos. I'll also throw that up. But uh, Rachel ran the saw. What do you guys think? For the <laughs> first time, not so bad. And it was a pretty big saw, the 044. I think she'll be a lot more comfortable running my little Echo. I was peer pressured into it. <laughs> the guys want to see Rachel on the no. saw. They love you. It was, it was easier than I thought it would be. Not as scary. I mean, it's scary when he's telling me I'm going to cut my face off, maybe. So I don't like that. I like your face. Potential I danger. Your face but it was easier than I expected. Felt different than I thought it would. We did overlook the uh, strings. strings. Those should, be, should have been tied in. I didn't think of it because the, they're removed from my sweatshirt. So. Sorry, but, uh, safety place. We will be better next time. And we'll get Rachel a more adequate saw for her till she gets comfortable. And soon we'll both be running saws at the same time flying through this wood. And we got the samurai, which she flies through wood with that. So. <laughs> I thought you were going to make a dirty joke. <laughs> no, you... this is a family show. <laughs> <laughs> you say that all the time. I have to uh, keep you in check. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, leave us comments. What'd you think? Do you think Keith should continue his Facebook marketplace addiction? You guys love it. You know you love seeing all this <laughs> it's stuff. It's one of many addictions this man has. All involves spending money, unfortunately, for me. In all seriousness, though, what do you guys think of the 044? I know a lot of people hold it as one of the better firewood saws of all times. Top five, top ten. I love my Makita. That saw is lighter than the Makita and it cuts pretty good. I know there's the 500i and the 400c and all the Huskies and other great saws out there, but I was happy to get that 044, especially for $300. You're not going to beat that saw for $300. Would you have bought it for $300? Let us know. <laughs> so hit that bell icon if you haven't already so you get notified when our videos go live. And as always, thank you for the support for the channel. We appreciate it. And... We hope you are living blessed lives. <laughs> I'm going to stay out here, work under the lights a little bit to make some more rounds because we got the Wolfridge 28 Pro C coming. We've got the Easton Made 1222. We've got the all wood muscle wood and we have all blue and we're going to run these things against each other. So you're not going to want to miss that in upcoming no. videos. Oh God. Yep. Stare right at me. No, I didn't try to. How many of you guys use headlamps? Do you always look people right in the face because you don't realize it? All right, I'm gonna see if I can get a little bit more cutting in because I need to get more wood for the splitters. While we were cutting, my sister's boyfriend, my sister's. My sister. <laughs> my daughter's boyfriend showed up and he saw us video in and he drove right through our set. But we had our tools, the Achenkopf, Hookeroon, the chalk and the little measuring stick in the middle of the driveway and he ran this thing square over, but it doesn't look like it took any damage, so it should be fine. I guess it's a stress test for it. In case you're wondering, you could run these over with a vehicle and they will still work fine. I wouldn't recommend it though, but yeah. uh, I've got a light on the tractor and I've also got this light that was sent to me by Olight. It's the Olight Baton Pro 3 Max. No one can see that. I'll talk more about it when you can actually see the light. I'll be honest, when I first got this thing and I tried it out tracking a deer, I wasn't impressed. I have other lights that I like much better and I was like, I'm not putting that on the channel. I won't recommend something I don't believe in. 
but then the more I used it, it's small, it fits in my pocket, I don't know it's there, and a lot of times I need a light, it was always there ready to grab. It's easy to use, just a little push button on and off. It turns on on the last setting you had it on, and then if you hold it, it'll cycle through three levels of brightness. And then if you need the turbo mode, you just double click the button and it goes to turbo, and if you need a strobe for something, you just triple click it. Ah, don't do that, you need a warning. So I'm gonna throw it on my hat, Use the tractor light and see if I can work safely bucking up some more of this maple round. This flashlight's much brighter than that tractor light. I'll use my crush chalk here that just got ran over. We've got some mule deer venison roast inside getting ready for dinner. My oldest boy Joe and I went out to Montana this fall. That's what he wanted to do for his spring break trip was a hunting trip, so I was more than happy to oblige. That's a big word for you. I use big words all the time, it's just usually in the wrong context. Runs like a camp. I think we might be out of gas. Yep, it won't run without gas. Sorry, I just blinded you again. I wonder if that will stick to the, I can't see what I'm doing, if you stick it to the metal. You can see just how big this tractor bucket is. I love this thing. It makes my saw look small. Mm. Almost a perfect pour. <laughs> Runs much better with some fuel in her. is offering this light for 30% off from 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today, January 10th, until midnight on January 12th. So if you're interested in this light, check out the link in the description. <laughs> That actually works very well. This light lights up your work area. There's nothing to be concerned about for safety. I don't even need that tractor light. It clips to the hat with a little clip. I like it and the size of it's small. The old light that I had did the same thing and it was brighter, but it was a larger light. The size of this thing is perfect for this. You don't feel it really heavy on the hat and it works yeah. great. All right, so that light worked great for that. Didn't like it initially when I used it for tracking, but for this application and for a few other applications I used it in since, I really grew to like that light. I've been sent a lot of products or contacted by a lot of reps for me to try their product, put it on the channel, and I tell them if I don't like it, it's not making the channel. If I wouldn't buy it on my own, it won't make the channel. And initially this light wasn't going to make it, but I really like it now that I've used it more and I well, carry it with me almost every day. Yeah, tell them what it was that when you were like looking under the, using it for the car. All right, so our trip to Missouri 
is when I really started liking this light because as you know, I waited to the last minute to get ready to go, to load everything up, hook the splitter up, everything. We went hunting up at our property, had to drive home. It was dark. We're about to pull out the driveway and I thought, you know what, I better check the fluids in the truck before we make the trip. So I opened the hood. I don't have a truck light under there. And I had this flashlight that I was using. The magnet on the back that is for the charger just clipped right on the hood and the floodlight illuminated the entire engine bay. So I was able to add the oil I needed to check everything hands-free without having it clipped onto a hat or anything. So that was really nice. You charge it by that magnet on the back, which is super simple and easy. But what I don't like is that's the only way to charge it. So if you break that charger or you forget it when you go somewhere and your light dies, you're out of luck. So one recommendation I made to the company, which they said they had already looked into, was a type C charger or some alternative method because that is a shortcoming of this light. I'm gonna stay out here cut. Rachel's gonna go in. It's a little bit chilly and working in the dark isn't that much fun, but I wanna get more wood ready for these splitters. Gotta do some jumping jacks. Warm up. Stay hot, stay hot. Huh, huh, huh. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Whew. Oh, I need to go inside by the fire. 